1866 was supposed to be correcting the 1857 Dred Scott decision, which says that it that was written by the United States Supreme Court that says in this country that a black person, a black man has no right to a white person, person is bound to respect. And that's so bad. And so after the Civil War ended, one of the first things that the radical Republicans did, there were a few liberal Republicans then who, who had white, who had black babies American, and had black businesses. They did, they did the role what they called the young. The first, uh, first civil rights law in 1865. And what they said is this country for black folks to be able to survive and compete minimally to come out of slavery, minimally, they must have 40 acres, a mule, and $100. And then and Andrew Johnson, who replaced uh, uh, the uh, assassinated Abraham Lincoln, said, no, we're going to give him anything. We turned loose, we're going to turn loose, blow, hold, and know it was nothing. And uh, because we're going to cut a deal with the North, so that because the South is going to get their land back, they're going to still need cheap labor. And therefore, we're going to set up peonage codes and the black codes and Jim Crow segregation so they continue to use black folks. But the Republican came back again in 1865 and overrode his veto. I mean, they enacted the Civil Rights Law of 1866 again. So minimally, you must give black folks the resources in this country to be competitive. But they didn't give it to them. What they did again, they gave back all their land to the Southern South. It was a list of the first, first terrorists in America the state that you all out for are called the Red State. They are still saying they're going to rise again. They are rising right now in the, in the, in the Trump administration across this nation. And in every election, that's why you got Trump serving as a Manchurian candidate to be able to make sure that Trump rise again. And that's the issue in this country. All the resources that black folks have been given throughout history were taken over, dominated by immigrants coming in, and black folks never got anything. They left penniless, poor, powerless, and they had a the subordinate extent. They had six to eight times their fair share of everything that they had. There's no way on this earth that black folks can be competitive to survive even now. But if they put in all these up, bringing another 24, 30 million immigrants in this country over the top of black folks, that's the nail in the coffin. So that's why I said I'm, 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 ag I'm agonizing, I'm a real pleasure. So I'm giving more speeches and doing some workshops across this nation. Those two one and a half day workshops to teach black folks how to build, rebuild our communities, how to how to improve economics and move politics, and how to learn how to how to how to be a competitive group in this country and, and, and acquire wealth and resources as quickly as they can. I'll be available. And I'll, I'll take any questions you have now, Carl. Majority black county with all the great wealth and all the educated blacks living there. And in that county, the immigrants come in there. And the typical immigrants is living in Washington, uh, PG County. They have something like five times now the wealth and income of, this, of blacks over there that living in that area. Black folk got a world of trouble. And since they got planning, nothing they have to do is this. You got to stop all of these blacks out of the front of the home program. Black walk out of the front of the black plan. If they walk out of the front of the black plan, then, uh, then they, all those immigrants may not be eligible then, and all these other groups would fall out because the because affirmative action was not designed for anybody for black folks. I have the dubious honor of being the person that wrote the first affirmative action plan in the United States of this nation. I wrote that in 1970, 1971, for the state of Florida, that's approved by the government and the state cabinet system. And I wrote that plan for black folks. But, then, but within two years, it had been, it had been corrupted to be for everybody. And then, and then, then at that point, the Cubans came in and started taking over everything in South Florida, which is black folks, all the hotels, the businesses, and jobs all over the state of Florida, and became a power base. And black folks now went back about 200 years in history. And so what I'm saying to you is that they, they take it out of the affirmative action plan and close it down, and black, and black folks pull out, then they would collapse. Because right now they took the titles, I mean, they call what they call it, the title, uh, eight, uh, nine in the, uh, in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the affirmative action plan, put white women into the affirmative action plan against blacks. White women are not a minority. They are a majority majority. And they have dominated the affirmative action plan. And the immigrants are picking up the rest of it, the rest of the money. That's why I look at Texas. Well, out of 100 of all the money going into contracts in the state of Texas in about six years, we'll have to check that. Out of that, in that state, black women got 78 percent of all the money. Hispanics got something like about, uh, about I think about, about 20, almost 20, 21 percent, and blacks got nine tenths of one. And so, get out of it and start going for reparations about and demand. Don't beg. That's what my Hispanic friends tell me. It's a difference if you all beg and we demand and, and get. On the record, for all these years, it fell out of the Monroe Doctrine, which says nobody can go in to help Haitians. Haitians, they cannot ship resources to them, they cannot lift the quality of life for Haitians because of the quota system in the United States and under the Monroe Doctrine, what keeps them in this United States 
as less as one half of one percent of the population coming in. And the last thing I want to say to it is that as black folks again was drawing the sticks and saying we are special people and, and say we want we demand, not beg, we demand that you do not that you postpone any more immigration laws until you lift the quality of life for black folks in the country and provide those same economic, political, and social benefits that you've been providing for immigrants ever since the following of the country. It's called the American Dream. The American Dream started in 1790, Carl. It's two things based on the American Dream to hear Obama and everybody bragging about every politician bragging about the American Dream and American values. The values of black folk would be kept at the bottom level, and the American Dream was this. It's based on two things. One, that anybody, immigrants coming to this country can get unearned benefits. They wouldn't come here looking for freedom or, for, or religion. They wouldn't come here looking for happiness. They were coming here to get two benefits. One was free Indian land and free black labor. And then since that time, the people can still come here get over black folks and advantage themselves off of black people. That's why all these immigrants go by black folks and be 200 miles an hour and build up communities. Africa town, Chinatown, Korea town, Old Town, Hockey Town, Greek Town, and, and a little Italy, any kind of town, little Havana, little Cuba, and black folk are still stuck at the bottom of the barrel. I want black folk to say, demand that not only they, that, that, the, that the Republican Party and the Democratic Party start including blacks and start dialoguing about the negative impact that immigrants have on black folk in this country, as always had and will always have until they stop putting black into a protected position and begin to focus on them. And tell these and tell these, these civil rights leaders and also the black elected officials that they got that they have to cease and desist being a double agent and being and, and, and betraying their own people by ignoring that that, that, that people are suffering and they're in this country and they're bearing six to eight times their fair share of everything that's bad in the society. And, and Doug, how can we compete? Well, today Wells Fargo announced that it's, it's uh, allocating 125 billion with a B. Uh, for Hispanic mortgages, for Hispanics to, to own homes. And, and that, uh, that, that, that did call us some tummy. And, 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 and all this is being combined with two processes they got. They got a process 